श्री कैपिल विश्वनाथन चेयरमैन क्रिया यूनिवर्सिटी डॉक्टर महेश रंगराजन वाइस चांसलर क्रिया यूनिवर्सिटी श्रीमती सुजाता एंड श्री प्रेम कुमार डॉटर सनिंदा ऑफ द ग्रेट सन ऑफ दिस ग्रेट कंट्री श्री मोटूर सत्यनारायण गारु वैसे मुकुंद पद्मनाभन माय वर्ल्ड फ्रेंड professors and staff and dear students distinguished guests and others who are watching this program virtually i am really very happy to be present in this program it will appear to be small small is beautiful when it is beautiful it becomes mighty and then it conveys a powerful message because of this pandemic we could not have an actual function so we have to take course to this virtual because now virtual has become factual for the time being though you don't derive that much satisfaction of uh, virtually attending the conferences but there is no other way you can't stop the communication it really gives me immense pleasure to inaugurate sri motur satyanana center for advanced study in humanities at kriya university today i commend the management staff and all those associated with this momentous milestone in kriya's journey which has been synonymous with importing quality education in humanities and social studies named after the eminent son of india padma bhushan sri motur satyanand garu i am certain that the center with its academic rigor and focus on quality will grow into a transformative engaging hub of teaching and learning as a freedom fighter one of the framers of indian constitution and a parliamentarian for excel Sri Motur Satyanand Garu was a multifaceted personality and key figure in India's political history. Just now, Mr. Sanjay Prem Kumar ji has given an illustration of his just life. In a short time, he could present to all of us who are here, or who are watching or hearing the program, the persona of Sri Motur Satyanand Garu. the good constructive contribution he has made for the country's development as well as to the language india language ardent follower of and companion of mahatma gandhi ji sri motu satyanand garu was a major proponent of the use of indian language in all walks of life i am an ardent supporter of this movement of using and teaching indian languages to our indian students i am not against teaching foreign languages first you must be proficient and efficient in your own mother tongue be it tamil telugu hindi kannada malayali marathi punjabi assami bhojpuri santhal whatever it is first the children should be taught in their mother tongue and the language must be used in the house by the family members by the neighborhood and then you go to other languages because i always feel and i tell also and this i have taken it as a mission in my own humble way of i interact with students i go to iits tripurites iims research centers krishi vigyana kendras all across the country reach out to the scientific community students at large and i stress on this subject they should really focus on first learning their mother tongue communicating in their mother tongue and learning as many indian languages as possible other languages and learn 
possible number of foreign languages also. Just now before coming here, I was watching a WhatsApp message, small conversation between one Zonavitra Ramarangeswar Rao, a Telugu poet, and a friend from America. He was a scientist, she is in Vaslu, and they were conversing. And he was telling that after he studied intermediate in his mother tongue, he went, and then he went to France to do PhD. And to my surprise, he said that he did PhD in France. Naturally, I thought the PhD would have been in English. He said, no, in France you have to do PhD means you have to do it in French only. So three and a half years is in that course of submission of the PhD, he learned that language and then submitted his thesis in French. And he also said, of course, many of the Nobel Prize winners, they all had their early education in their mother tongue. It's a misconception, unfortunately, in this country, that without uh, going to English medium schools, you cannot come up in life. Children also often ask me, Sir, otherwise, how, how do you go up? In a lighter way, I tell them, God has given permission, no barriers. You can go up, up, through any language. He said, no, sir, not going up, but going to an eminent position. So to make students understand, I want to repeat this on this occasion, in the memory of the great son of our country, that the president, present president today, he had his education in his mother tongue. The present uh, vice president, myself, I never went to a convent. I studied in a street school, walking six kilometers a day. I studied in an ordinary school. And then the present prime minister, he never saw a convent during his childhood days. The present Chief Justice of India, Sri Ramana, he also recently confessed that he had his formal education in his mother tongue. But still he could become CJ. I could become Vice President. Sri Ramanath Govindji could become President of India. Sri Narendra Modi ji has become a popular Prime Minister. So all this shows, yes, you must learn as many languages as possible. And boy, in this practical globalization, you need to learn other languages too. But first of all, you must learn your mother tongue. And then we must also learn Hindi because large number of people speak Hindi in this country. What is the purpose of the language? One is about to remind of culture, heritage. Second is to communicate. Na? If you are not able to communicate with the larger sections of the country, in the language known to them, what is the purpose? This has to be understood by one and all. I know I am speaking from Chennai. I always say, we must be open to learn as many languages possible, including Hindi. I come from Nellur. During my students' days, I participated in anti-Hindi agitation. And we were searching for Hindi signboards in my town. We could not find. One boy came running and he said, there are two places. We asked him, what are the places? He said, one is the railway station, another is the post office. So we got into two groups and went there and then put SAR on that dark gar, that board, and railway station. Later, after reaching Delhi, I realized that I put SAR on my face by not learning Hindi also. After the going to Delhi, I picked up Hindi. I could reach to this position. If you want to grow, if you want to communicate your ideas to the larger section of the people, you must know their language. And today, one of the largest lang spoken language, main language is Hindi there. That's why Gandhi ji has, a, at that time also Hindustani, Hindi means spoken language. We, so that's why I suggest 
There should not be any opposition to any language. I give a simple solution. No imposition, no opposition. No imposition of any language. You should not impose any language on children. And no opposition to any language. That is the solution to the controversy that is being created by some people. This is very much required. See, Satyanan Garu not only promoted Hindi, but also promoted his mother tongue, Telugu. I remember having met him during the world Telugu Mahasabra, Prabancha Telugu Mahasabra were held in Malaysia, Singapore. Later we came back to Chennai. He hosted all of us at his home at that time. Of the delegates who have gone from Andhra Pradesh, to that conference. I was just, I was young. I was a member of the Legislative Assembly of Andhra Pradesh at that time. Wonderful personality, very affectionate, very simple. He was founder, secretary of the Telugu Bhasha Samiti. About Hindi, of course, Prem Kumar has explained to us about the contribution he has made. We must accord due importance to Indian languages, especially our mother tongue, that I would like to stress. At all levels of administration, every state must use the local language, the state language, as a communication first. Then you can also have the second language, another language. English also, no problem. Hindi also, no problem. Now I am happy that uh, some youngsters in AACT they are developing simultaneous translation into seven languages. They made a presentation recently in Uparashtra Srinivasthani. They were so happy. That's one solution to this problem. The second one is I am also happy that AICT has taken initiative on the advice of the Prime Minister. Fourteen lakh engineering colleges are go, have commenced teaching in mother tongue, even engineering courses. So we must see a day where engineering, medicine, law, all these courses are taught in their mother tongue so that the creativity which is there in the children, it will come out. Antar Renanga unna, Matru Basha Pra unna, Amma Garbho ni chochana, a basha lo bodhishte walak sulabanga ardham otundu. Otherwise they have to first learn that language and understand that language. That's even today, I think in Hindi and speak, I think in Telugu and speak in Hindi and English. Even today, with all this experience. So, the promoting Indian languages promotes self-respect. Tamil, a great, beautiful, ancient language. Why should anybody feel shy? To speak in Tamil, to speak in Telugu, or for that matter, any other Indian languages. So I always feel proud to speak in mother tongue, wherever it is possible, wherever it is understood. And then in Indian language, then in English also. The national education policy, friends, is a visionary document that recognizes the importance of liberal arts and focus on a multidisciplinary approach in education in tune with contemporary time. It aims at decompartmentalization of the Indian education system and breaking the rigid and artificial barriers between professionals versus liberal education. That is a significant message from the new education policy. It rightly points out even in ancient times, good education was described as the knowledge of the 64 kalas, arts. This included the knowledge of scientific fields like chemistry and mathematics, vocational fields such as carpentry and cloth making, professional fields such as medicine and engineering, as well as soft skills such as communication, discussion and debate. So such a holistic approach to education must be revived again 
with an emphasis on liberal arts. It is unfortunate that the liberal arts have been relegated to a secondary position in the education in the recent decades. Liberal arts nurture qualities of critical thinking, problem solving, and adaptability in an individual. These attributes are in high demand in the 21st century economy, where no sector of the economy works in silo. We must therefore rediscover our parampara, or tradition, in liberal arts in order to shape well rounded individuals. In this regard, the students pursuing the fields of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics must get adequate exposure to liberal arts and social sciences, undergraduate programs, various assessments of such courses where humanities and arts are well integrated have shown an enhanced creativity and innovation, higher social and moral awareness, improved critical thinking, teamwork, and communication skills among the students. I am happy that we made a beginning. I am told that Kriya University also offers such courses, liberal arts, science and engineering in one program. This would contribute to expanding opportunities in order to open up new career pathways. We must explore multidisciplinary courses. Number of career trajectories in the coming years will require employees to have wider knowledge in diverse fields. The world is open up. You have opportunities and you also have challenges. You have to equip and prepare our younger generation students in that direction. We need the youth not only have an in-depth knowledge of their specialized area, but also have the ability to assimilate perspectives from other areas, integrate, integrate knowledge from all disciplines and also have soft skills for good communication. Friends, my appeal to parents and teachers is to infuse curiosity among the children. Learn more. Learn. So later you can earn and then return to the society. So that's why when students, a lot of students want to go abroad, I tell them, no problem, go. Learn, earn, and return. Coming back, and paying back to the motherland. Motherland means our own people. It gives you more satisfaction. And uh, universities must excel and move in that direction. Once upon a time, India was known as Viswaguru, Naranda, Takshasala, Dijan Takshasala, Vikramasala. A lot of institutions were there. Number of foreign students used to come. We must again move in that direction. I'm happy. When Mukund Padmanabhanji came and told me about this idea, I was really wondering, is it that much simple and is it possible to create such a university, Kriya University, named Kriya? Kriya means doing something, <laughs> something meaningful. But I am happy to know that uh, my Rangarajanji was telling me some 800 students and in a peaceful wonderful atmosphere in Sri City are pursuing their courses, but for this pandemic, the university might have grown up further, and we should encourage such institutions. I am happy the family of Satyanagar has come forward to create an endowment in his name. This is very much required. Well-meaning people, well-meaning families, they must come forward to contribute some of their earnings for enhancing education and knowledge among our children. Government alone cannot do it. It's not possible also. So many challenges. We are moving definitely in the right direction and we are economically becoming strong and now indications are that even after COVID, when we are recovering, the economy is going to move faster. But at the same time, we are a huge country, 130 crore population. We need private people also to join this moment.
There are no deaths of private people. They should be encouraged. And there has to be public private knowledge. Because education, I always say education is a mission. It is not for commission. So nobody should give any remission or do any omission. It should be done with a passion for the sake of the nation. This is what I stress everywhere. I am happy that the Kriya University is moving in the direction and this endowment created in the name of Satyan Garu will inspire students. It's a very purposeful endowment that way. And we are talking of Satyan Garu as a politician. He was not a politician, he was a statesman type of person. Parliamentarian, patriot, constructive worker, member of the Constituent Assembly, without formal education. But having a lot of knowledge, jnana, wisdom, and then uh, contributing to the system. We need such people. We need such people in education, in the nation building, in the political leadership, in public life. We need people with character, caliber, capacity, and conduct who have a commitment to serve the country, to serve the society. Because share and care is the core of Indian philosophy. Share and care. You have to share your wealth with others. Penchukovala, penchukonudani, penchukovala. You must create wealth and distribute wealth among others. Then you will get derive great satisfaction, happiness. Happiness is not through wealth alone. Happiness is by doing, by seeing, by appreciating good things, not by good people. So we must, the present generation, particularly youngsters, they must go through the life of such great people, visit their life, know their life, and try to evaluate and maintain standards. He maintained standards in public life. Now the standards are falling in different walks of life, including legislature. I am more concerned about what is happening in the legislature. As the chairman of the upper house, I am more distressed about what is happening in my house, upper house, because we are called as upper house, house of elders. We must set examples. What is happening in various legislatures across the country, including the parliament, is really disturbing. Politicians who are there, they must understand. That's why people also should select and elect such people with character, caliber, capacity and conduct. Unfortunately, in the place of these forces, other forces are encroaching upon character, caliber, capacity and conduct. They are the original forces. The new forces are caste, community, cash and criminality. If they find place and they creep into this public life, you can imagine what is happening, what, is, what can happen. So we must really motivate our younger generation to move to public life with a commitment to build the nation, serve the nation. And this legislator should be ideal. MLA, MLC, MP, even the municipal corporator, councillor, they should be setting examples on the path of Satyanagar and many, there are many, many great examples in Tamil Nadu, there is no death right from Satyamurti Garu, Rajagopalachari, to many, another a lot of politicians, they set standards in public life. They made their valuable contribution throughout their life. Even before that, this great land, Veerapande Kattabaman, Muthuramalinga Sevar, Sevar, Muthuramalinga Sevar, and then Subhash Chandra Bose, see the connection because of the national interest. So such people should be encouraged and uh, I feel that on this occasion of the inauguration of the endowment in Sri Motor Satyanagar Center for Advanced Study in Humanities at Kriya University will become more and more popular and more and more people take advantage of the same. And I once again compliment the family members particularly Prem Kumarji and Sujata Garu, 
and other family members for coming forward for uh, making this endowment in the memory of the great person. I hope that more people will come forward and join the initiative in various universities and institutions to set up such endowments. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Wanna come? Nandri, wanna come?